Verse 157. From the union of mother and father, the Alaya gets connected with Manas, like a rat in a pot of ghee. The red together with the white grows up. I think we can take this quite literally, the union of mother and father, because the next few verses are to do with the process of birth. But this is what happens in the new life form. The alaya gets connected with manas. Alaya is awareness and manas is the conceptual mind. It's the mind which cognizes things and these cognizances become what is real, they become our reality. It's described as being like a rat in a pot of ghee which is a rather horrible image. Ghee is clarified butter used in cooking, used in cooking your favourite Indian dishes. So it's not very nice to have a rat caught up in it. But I think in this simile we're supposed to be seeing things from the rat's perspective. The rat is the Aya, and it's caught up in this clawing ghee, which is threatening to pull it down completely. And this, and this is how it feels being a spiritual practitioner sometimes. In fact, I would go as far as to say, unless you're exceptional, being a spiritual practitioner, the result is more often than not failure. Because you've got this continuous drag and you've got to put all your effort into just hanging on, staying alive. You can do so much with this ghee. You can fry up any kind of food in it. Do we have to bother about this rat which is getting in the way? The ghee's got so many uses. What use is this rat? Get rid of it. This is how it is. These videos are my rat. Sometimes I don't want to know about them. Sometimes I want to dismiss them. Sometimes I want to regard them as some sort of weird aberration of mine of no practical or spiritual relevance. But that's when I'm out of touch. Whenever I give the rat a chance, whenever I allow it to remind me of how things are, and of what I'm about as a spiritual practitioner. And things come back into focus once again. And then things become very clear. But most of the time, it's like a rat caught up in a pot of ghee, and the red together with the white grows up. So what's the red and the white? Well, Sticking with the theme of childbirth, which is pursued in the next few verses, I'm going to just suggest that the red is the red of the womb and the white is the white of the sperm.
because this is the process which is indicated in the next few verses. So I'm not going to look for anything deeper than that. We just need to press on with the next verse. Verse 158. Through the stages of Pesi, Gana and Arbuda, the boil grows, an unclean mass bearing a fruit of karma. Nourished by the wind of karma and the four elements, it comes to maturity like a fruit. So, there's no sentiment here about childbirth. It's an unfortunate situation because we're being plunged headlong into delusion. So we've got these stages, Pesi, Gana and Arbuda, and these are stages in the development of the fetus. If you like, you can do further research on this, but it's not really relevant to us. It's it's basically comparing the growth of a fetus to a boil, an unclean mass bearing a fruit of karma. So this boil has got its work cut out. It's nourished by the wind of karma and the four elements. So the karma is all your baggage, all your inclinations, all the tendencies which you need to somehow work out. This is what brings you into this life. It's like a voltaic potential that erupts into a new birth with unresolved longings. We can think of them as coming from a previous life or we can think of it purely in terms of DNA, the progress of DNA working itself out through generation to generation. But I see it's like a thundercloud which builds up this mass of electrostatic which, has, which at some point has to be discharged. And so we have this mass of longings, of emotions which I see no reason to stop with the end of the physical body. At some point these longings, these emotions have to be worked out. But that's just my own personal understanding. Verse 159 The five, the five and the five and the sores are nine. Males' teeth and hair are supplied, when ready to spring forth it is born. So the five and the five and the five obviously refer to three lists of five. doesn't say what they are here, but they could be the five skandhas, the five senses, the five limbs, or two legs, two arms, and our head sticking from our torso. The sores are nine, so the sores are the outlets. These are the openings of the body. We've got the two eyes, the two ears, <coughs> two nostrils, that's six. The mouth is seven. And we've got a couple down in the genital regions. Nails, teeth and hair are supplied and ready to spring forth. It is born. Verse 160, when the baby is just born, it is like a worm growing in the dung. No sentiment here. The baby. <laughs> Peas, shits and vomits. Like a man waking from sleep, the eye begins to distinguish forms and discrimination goes on increasing. And this is what was spoken of in verse 156. We've got this discrimination going on which gives reality to a particular take on things. Verse 161 With knowledge gained by discrimination, human speech is produced from the combination of the palate, lips and cavity, and discrimination goes on like a parrot. It doesn't stop. <coughs> this is what our conceptual mind is doing all the time. It's going on reinforcing 
a particular reality, the cultural reality and the individual reality determined by our pattern of moods. This is the situation. This is, this is what we're having to deal with as rats caught up in a pot of ghee. <laughs>